you've had your two preseason games, you lost them narrowly. Are you satisfied with the preseason that you've laid down? Oh, not necessarily. I said after the game that this is a time where you get perspective and can compare yourselves to other teams, other clubs, how they may be going. Uh, as you know, the evolution of the competition over the last two years, um, the CBA negotiations with the three weeks off uh, now over New Year's and um, and the shorter pre-seasons only starting sort of, you know, early December, only squeezing in two and a half weeks of training with the more experienced players. And, um, and you know, having played right through the final series, it means you've got a shorter timeline um, to prepare in the, in that vein, but um, so I, I'm I'm feeling like we're in a pretty good position that we're we're okay. We're not as healthy as we have been in other years from an injury point of view. Uh, I'm I'm really content with the amount of opportunities we're creating for ourselves. I said after the game over 130 450 entries on our behalf in the two games. It's just. Uh, there's a sheen of quality that's lacking and um, and hopefully that chemistry can uh, emerge pretty quickly as we start the season proper. When you go into um, a new season and and we were, Jared and I were talking about, I'm not sure if you heard us, but he he asked me about how I approached the 2019 preseason after losing the granny in 18. Is there anything that you did specifically to, um, how did you address the game um, uh, beyond the win loss um, with your players and, and, and how did you, you know, set up your preparation for this year, you know, with that as a, with an inevitable backdrop in the, in the hearts and minds of your players? Yeah, to be totally honest, Buck, so I, I delved into the reasons why the season ended so um, dramatically and probably traumatically a little bit. Mm. Um, and when you, you try and identify all the variables, all the intangibles, it was just too hard, um, considering what we'd been through, uh, the incarceration of probably that last you know, 35 days, um, how we dipped just before the final series, how we had to readjust personnel roles. Um, and you know, there were so many um, extreme positives going into um, you know, the last game of the year. And... Um, to try and pinpoint, you know, the, the one or two or three things, uh, you, I just felt like I was going to miss the mark. Mm. And, um, and that's obviously not taking away from how powerful Melbourne were in the end and, uh, and how much of a, um, you know, they capitalised on that, um, on the strength of their team right at the end of the game. And, and so not, our players will never come to me and say, you know that they were cooked, they were fatigued. Um, I think, you know, you can you can dream a little bit. You can think that you're on the dais. You know, when you're up by 19 points in a grand final, I don't know whether that happened. And these are the things that you have got to deal with. But I did say the other day that um, in triumph or in victory or in um, in defeat, you you need to move on mm. and uh, and reestablish yourself all over again. And so I've taken a pretty simplistic approach to it in that. Um, Trying, we've, we've, there's an air of positivity around the place, which is important, and um, and I think we a lots to be gained on how we got there, and uh, and how we might be able to build on that more than uh, focusing on why it fell apart late in the game. So it's it's probably a glass half full approach to the start of 2022. Yeah, I think it's it is a broad a broad challenge, isn't it? And, and hitting the mark for one player might not be. The same, uh, the same emotional point for the next. Um, you've obviously lived that through your Hawthorne experience and, and had, you know, they're bouncing back after 12 and then the, the run of success. Um, I'm sure that the emergence of new talent is part of, and, and the focus on, you know, where the growth is going to come from and possibility is, is part of, you know, focusing on the now and the future. Um, you spoke about uh, Hugo Hagen. Um, a couple of, well, you've had to speak about him quite often, mate. I reckon you'd probably get that question nearly every week. But I'm pretty sure he'd be in the side if you thought that he was going to make you a better side. And he's still a really young player. Is that difficult to balance? Do you find that difficult to balance the media hysteria about a young, talented player versus the reality of, of having to grow and learn 
um, and understand, you know, where the gaps are in his game and, and be able to, you know, manage him psychologically between the expectations and the reality? Uh, yeah. Difficult is, um, I'm not sure. I, I, I just yearn for um, an understanding of of the position, um, the individual, um, what's expected in, in a role like that and how long it, it takes. You know, we, let's, let's say someone like Jack Rewald or, um, or Tom Hawkins and, you know, how long it took players who are now just, you know, elite key forwards in the game. It's not going to happen straight away and overnight. And, but the, the hysteria around early draft picks, um, we know that when it's a, an inside midfielder type like a, a Sam Walsh or a Bailey Smith or a Horn Smith this year, um, that the possibility that they really impact in their first year is very real. Uh, less so with a with a young key forward, and um, and so just I, I think just dumbing down the the expectation mm. um, would be would be nice before I have to smooth it out because I, I think it shows a lack of um, analytical prowess or understanding from the commentary um, if we're asking for reasons why. It's not happening. They, people should just understand that the reasons are quite obvious. Um, and uh, and Murray's Mar- going to take time. So um, I, I, I just think it's part of, you, you know as well as I do, it's part of our um, our battle to make sure that we we have a, the right message out there. And um, and I think you said it the other day, you know, you, you're always concerned that the headline's not going to match, match the content. And... Um, when the sub editors get a hold of the story and, and, and put a headline up, it just doesn't match the sentiment either. I'll fight, We've fight always been concerned about, <laughs> concerned about that. So ultimately, that's why um, there's not a, a huge appetite on my behalf to talk um, out of turn and too often because then I'm smoothing out um, the story that's been blown up by a clickbait headline. As you come into the season, Luke, uh, so you're an established final team. Uh, some years I imagine you come into a year searching for who you're going to be and some years you know who you are. Do you have a few things to sort out in the early rounds of the season, do you feel? We definitely do, yes. Uh, every year, Jared, from the boys who have performed um, to really uh, adequate and um, high in performance level, you're still looking for increments of improvement from. I'm not sure until we uh, we hit the season proper, that that all our players are in that uh, in that mode yet. So that's our our own individual and personal challenges as players. Um, and then you're looking for um, players to emerge, guys who are in their first or second year and maybe third year, and um, and that's a wait and see as well. And we've still got some uncertainty in our uh, in in particular where our who's going to play in our key position areas and who's going to spend uh, the most time in the ruck. And, uh, and that's not an ideal space to be in, to be honest. And um, we've had some injury through our, our key forward and key back stocks. And now uh, we've got to work out what the balance is with, with Tim and Stefan and Jordan Sweet um, from a ruck point of view and how we can get an advantage tactically over the opposition. So how primary a consideration it is as to what you put around Aaron Norton, who uh, we well know what he's capable of and what he's growing into. Um, but, yeah, one, one key forward sort of not, not really enough. No, it isn't. I, I think it's underestimated the, how much of an impact your, your small to mediums can have if they can still compete in the air. But... But yeah, I mean, you're alluding to the fact that it can't be a one-man band competing against two or three opposition key backs who are, you know, intercept aerialists or really adept at the spoiling game. And that um, that support act or acts um, we're in search of. And um, Aaron Aaron will um, do everything he can, as you, as you see and as you note. Uh, week to week to to impact every contest he can get to, um, but yeah, it is it is a um, a talking point within match committee 
and uh, and obviously there are some players who who want a spot or two, and uh, and we've got some things in mind, but um, some of the late interruptions with you know, Warren Gardner going out just before this game, Alex Keith um, coming in late, then only playing a half. Um, you know, it hasn't hasn't been ideal. So we'll uh, we'll get there. We'll be pretty healthy, but we we won't have established the chemistry we would have liked. But I don't think anyone will have anyway. So we're not any different to any other team. Who do you want to and need to stand up in this interim whilst um, to support Aaron in that, in those roles? Mitch Hannon's one of those. He didn't have his best game the other night, but he's a very capable. Uh, ground and air player and can play like a key forward. Yep. Uh, so he he's one who's got some experience now, Mitch, and he's lightning quick and uh, and by and large he's a good finisher. So we're hoping that Mitch can take his game to um, to the next level. And um, and then oh, I mean our, our taller mids will spend some periods forward. Obviously Marcus can compete in the air dunks. Dunks is only really scratching the surface with his capabilities, um, but he's he's really important to us, mm. you know, in that midfield area. So, we've got to strike a balance, and then, you know, I think this is this is the reason why you know Jamara is is emerging, um, and the next um, aspect for him is to be totally ready to run four quarters of uh, of an AFL game, and um, and compete more often than not. And he's got a huge appetite for it. Just being in the uh, the right spots at the right time, so um, so hopefully as the season um, evolves, Jamara can come to the fore and uh, and play some important minutes down there. And and there's no doubt that Tim will, you know, we want Tim to play in the ruck, but Tim will be forward here and there as well. So as we finish, Luke, we're eight days out. It's a splendid prospect to start the season, how the previous finished, and particularly given it's at the MCG, and we know all in Melbourne life that's tied into that. Just tell me this. Is there angst with Melbourne? There's always a chemistry between grand final pairings. Is there angst there? Uh, I think it's probably not a question for me, Jared. It's definitely a question for the players. They're the ones... Um, who uh, you know have obviously been exposed to the you know the face to face on ground and and obviously there's some stories coming out of what happened in Perth that um, that you know none of us were there so we we can't um, we can't speak to it but um, I I don't know I I, I think there, there, if there's a fierce rivalry um, that's emerging. Then I think it's healthy for the game, healthy for both clubs. Um, is there a jealousy of uh, of what happened uh, Grand Final day last year? You'd hope so. Uh, and if that drives our passion and our uh, our vigour in the round one game, then, then that's going to be important. But um, but getting getting caught up in anything peripheral around you know a street fight and and confrontational aspects might. It's probably going to take us away from the core of how we want to play. So it's important that we strike a balance with uh, with where our focus is, and uh, and I definitely won't be building up any any of that um, in the lead up. As I said, it's a it's a new season. It's a time to re-establish ourselves, and um, and hopefully we don't need any more incentive than than just to chalk up that first four points uh, in front of hopefully a really big crowd at the MCG. Terrific, Luke. There'll be a huge crowd, I'm sure. Good luck for the journey ahead. Thanks for your time this morning. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Bob.